Hi guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel. And today I want to talk about starting over again. That's right. If you were to start this hobby, this mad hobby called horology, watch collecting, wrist watches, what would you do differently? And what would you collect this time round? Quick wristwatch check, wearing the Bregster, the Breguet Type 20. And don't forget, guys, like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel. Tell your friends about this channel. And don't forget, guys, um, men cannot live on Google Ads alone. Look in the description for 10 ways you can help me full time. One of the greatest ways is sponsor me on Patreon. I actually give special videos to Patreon viewers. That's right. Patreon sponsors, they get secret videos that other people don't get. And uh, these are very, very, you know, I, I, I really want to get that interaction with my Patreon supporters happening. So let's talk about what would you do starting over again? Well, I can tell you one thing I wouldn't do. I wouldn't churn and burn churn and burn the watches I've had there. I've had so many. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Rolex, Cartier, Omega, Breguet, Breitling, da 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 Now, what I would do this time is I would stop. Instead of having this mad churn and burn, starting again, I would say to myself, you know something, guys? We're not living in 1996 anymore. The dress watch is dead. The dress watch is dead. I would seriously say, look, guys, <coughs> I want, they got to be automatic or manual wind mechanical watches. No quartzies, no, no fangle jangle technology there. I would also say, I would say, you know, what I really, how many did you want? When were you happiest? And I'm looking back on my collecting phase there. And I normally, at the moment, I got six. Six pieces in the collection. The Archie 5 was very popular. And I also had four for a long time. And I had eight and, tw you know, I had some, quite a lot of uh, wrist watches. When was I happiest? I tell you the truth. I was probably happiest when... I had less watches than more. That's right. Less is more. For everything you gain, you lose something. And, you know, when I had eight watches, I used to just wear the lower end two pieces. And I didn't want to wear the good ones because they would get down. And I'm thinking, does the world need another perfect example? Calatrava 5107. Wear the bloody thing. Get some enjoyment from it. And I got to tell you, sometimes with your watch, your watches themselves there, you get too caught up in this horological struggle that you really want to be a little bit more careful. And I, I would really say, I'd say, okay, well, look, what do I really want there? I would seriously say, you know, I've done the gold thing. It was nice to show off with yellow gold. Yes, that was great. I really find steel to be my metal of choice. I like steel stunners. Uh, <clears throat> and I would like a little bit of variety there. So if I was starting again, I would say, okay, okay, I want to get a few pieces. The rules are this. Number one, every man, every man needs at least one Rolex. So... I would seriously get, the first watch I would get would be some sort of Rolex. And I don't care whether it was a um, a Rolex Submariner, a GMT or an Explorer. It has to be some sort of Rolex. Now, this is a very interesting question. You've got to pick the one that really sings to you. And uh, in my case, I would really, I would really, in Rolexes themselves there, I really like a Rolex, you know, I, 
kind of, I mean, two frames of mind there. But I kind of like a sports complication, like an explorer or a, uh, a subby or a sea dweller. But then again, I like the beauty of having no date. So I would really work out, personalize it as much as you could there and have one Rolex. Now, this one Rolex, I got to tell you, I had an Explorer 1 before. And that was probably the most versatile Rolex in the range because it is a legendary sports performer. That was the watch. Went to Mount Everest. Sir Edmund Hillary allegedly had a Rolex Explorer. That's what the model was based on. And it but it doesn't have complications and grandiose. It's a very it's a chronometer, very, very simple. It's basically an oyster perpetual with chron chronometer grade movement. Okay? And it's got the beautiful three, six, nine on the dial there. So that's all cool. That's all cool. So something simple in Rolex. Something Rolex. So it'd have to be steel. It would have to be an oyster. It needs to be an oyster. I'd like an oyster. Um, so I, I would say contenders would be, for me, if I was to start again, I reckon the 39mm Explorer 1. I reckon... Um, even a Milgauss would be so cool. I love the blue Milgauss. Blue's kind of my color. Uh, I mean, if purple is your color, maybe an Oyster Perpetual. Grape! Grape. So you've got to really customize it to your taste there. So you, every man needs to have a Rolex. Because a Rolex is waterproof. <laughs> it, you can just wear it. It's just... <laughs> and steel, it's under the radar. It's really under the radar. So I would say some sort of steel men's Rolex. I kind of, <laughs> I got to be honest with you. The question is, are you going to buy new or second hand? If you're buying new, if you were buying a new Rolex, well, there are certain models that are better. And if you're buying a used Rolex, there's certain models that are better. For example, if you're buying new, uh, steel Rolex Sports is the way to go. Whether it's a Batman, whether it's a, a Rolex Subdate, whether it's a, you know, those are really, really, if you're buying new, you're going to retain a lot of value. If you're buying on the second hand market, the game is a little bit different because there are certain models that are better by second hand. The Rolex Explorer 2 is soft. Okay, that is soft at the moment. That is a great buy. If you're buying used, that's a great buy. Um, another watch which is great on the used market is maybe an Oyster Perpetual. Oyster Perpetual or a Datejust, they're really, really good buys on the used market. So I think, number one, every man does need some sort of steel sports. <coughs> well, steel Rolex, steel Rolex. Now, the second watch, so that's number one. Some sort of Rolex. Number two, it depends on the individual. <laughs> now, I think you really want to get some sort of complication as the second watch. <laughs> We've got the Rolex for everyday workwear. That's to, you know, we can just wear it, set the time, beautiful. However, however, we need something a little bit fancy in the second watch. Now, I really, really do love, men love gadgets. And I would be looking at, I think as a second watch, you can't go past a chronograph. You know, that's the stopwatch in a watch because, you know, it's kind of so cool. We've already got our Rolex, which is waterproof and it's our everyday thing. But it's kind of nice to have a chronograph. You can time things. You know, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a cool function to have. Now, what would I say there? Well, there are many, many good chronographs. Again, I would be saying steel. I reckon steel is the metal of choice. Uh, the, the obvious answer is, is the Amiga Seamaster Man on the Moon. Man on the Moon. It's a great choice, that there. Beautiful, good choice. Uh, steel bracelet. <coughs> Beautiful piece. Manual wine. Another great piece is something like a Breguet. On the used market, you wouldn't want to buy a Breguet new. You'd want to buy that on the used market. Four thousands. That's where they're starting from on the used market. US, that's pretty good buying. There's some really fantastic chronographs there. You've got the Breitling Navi Timer. Um, if you're an IWC fan, the IWC 
Portuguese. Absolutely classic, stunner, gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So I would say as the second watch, you want a steel chronograph. Okay, that's what I'd be pitching. I reckon that is a really good second watch to have there. So that gives us two watches. Everyday Rolex, and we got some fancy sports chronograph for pleasure. How many more watches do you, would you have there? Well, that is about it. That is about it. I reckon that's about it. <laughs> Until we had a bit of a windfall, like you might have a inheritance comes your way. You might have, um, you know, some sort of very special occasion, which is when we get the ultimate grail watch the ultimate grail and it's something that we don't rush out once we've got those two watches some sort of steel sports some sort of steel rolex doesn't have to be sports it can be anything in an oyster case and we've got our chronograph those two can function fine the third one the grail that comes after many years you just can't instantly get this piece there now in my case I happen to have had a Calatrava, Patek Philippe Calatrava, which was a great piece. I enjoyed it, loved it. It was a beautiful piece. That's a really cool grail piece. Then I sold it for a sub, and now I've got a world time. Some people would say that's a silly choice. I, it's just, in my opinion there, I'm very happy to go on the journey. But some sort of grail piece. Now, you've got to be over 40 before you get it. And I reckon that is how I would start three simple watches. Do you, do you really need, do you really need a chronograph, a diver, a GMT, a dress watch? Do you really need, now I think that is a load of bullshit really. I tell you the truth. The only thing you need is one steel Rolex. That's all any man ever needs is one steel Rolex. Everything else is on top of that. So I really think <laughs> if I was starting again today, now it's a little bit different to me because I'm the YouTube celebrity and I got to present a persona and, you know, I can't really be myself. I've got to be this this thing that everyone thinks I am. So I need a few more. So, so in my case, I got six, but six isn't a lot of watches. That's not a lot of watches. And I gotta tell you, for me, it, I really enjoy one watch per brand. So one Omega, one Rolex, one of particular brands, because it makes you really think which one is the, is the one you like. Now it doesn't matter some people would say, oh, why did you go with the Explorer 2? That's the dog of the sports range. Well, yes, it possibly is. But when I was really into Rolex and into watches in the 90s, I loved that Explorer 2. I thought it was the coolest, swankiest watch there was. So, guys, you got to work out what works for you. If I was starting again, I can tell you now, I think two very stable watches and maybe a grail is it. That is it. Finito. Finished. That's all I'd be doing. This churn and burn is not a good idea. It's not a good idea at all. So if I was starting again, basically two watches. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you guys think of that. Nice one, Archie. And don't forget, guys, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and don't forget, sponsor me on Patreon. You can send as little as a dollar a month to keep me full-time on YouTube. And you get access to some secret videos. Yeah.